Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Gonna do some more work today on the Civic. I've got some new injectors to go in on the car. So when I bought the car, the guy mentioned when you got it tuned that it ran out of injector uh, when it was getting towards the top. When I took the injectors out before to do the fuel rail, I also noticed that a few of the caps were broken. So the actual spray pattern of the injectors probably definitely is not as good as it was um, from original. So that's going to affect some of the atomization of the fuel. I also plan on potentially turboing the car later or going to E85. Um, but figured how cheap injectors were um, before I get it tuned. I want to throw some new ones in. So there were some Black Friday sales and I got some Bosch 550cc injectors. These are what they look like. And if you're curious, that is the, the part number. So I got four, because I have four cylinder. I got these from Golby's, and they were $68 each. And also you have an option to choose the plug as well. And it only ended up being about an extra $2 per injector which is super cheap because they were like ten dollars per plug elsewhere then you're gonna need some pliers i went out and bought these these do non-insulated terminals like these metal ones here not like the blue red and yellow ones you see and then because most injectors are 14 mil o-ring on the top b series fuel rail is 9 mil o-ring so these are adapters that go from 14 mil to 9 mil and these are K-tuned and I got them from Elusive Racing in Melbourne and that was just under $50 for a set. So the plan is just move this strut bar out of the way and then I'm going to get the fuel rail off just remove the feed and then the return line at the back there and the vacuum line and just take the whole fuel rail off and then i'm going to cut back the injector pigtails wire the new ones in and then install the new injectors so first i'm just loosening up the strut brace and getting it out the way then moving on removing the fuel feed and the vacuum and the return line and also the breather valve now I'm just taking the nuts off the back of the fuel rail. There's three on there. The one on the end I couldn't get with a socket, so I'm just using a spanner. Then you can lift the fuel rail out. Now I'm just using a screwdriver to remove the injector clips. Two on the right look different to the two on the left because I think the injector cap is missing. So you want to make sure that you don't get anything inside these injectors before you install them. Said online it recommends using some engine oil to lubricate the seal before installing the o-rings. That way we prevent any damage from the o-ring Golby's did offer also flow matching where they'll test all the injectors and match them up with the most even flowing ones. Okay, so now they're installed ready to go back in the car. One thing to note is now the injector's gone from three quarter length to full length. So you're gonna need some different shims. In regards to the spacers, you can just get some six mil washers and stack them up on top of each other like this. This is future Jared. So after installing the injectors, the idle was a bit high because there was a leak through the injector. So when you install the injector into the lower seal, 
you can see on the actual metal part here, it doesn't seal. But if you move it up onto the, the plastic section with the stop there, it actually does make a seal. But I guess there was enough air for it to slowly leak through there. So I found online there's actually some adapters that seal on this lower o-ring that sit in the manifold. But um, I guess if you wanted to be a little bit dodgy, you could probably glue this seal on. I mean, it's not it's not loose on there, um, but I guess there's enough air leaking past for it to idle. It was idling about 1700 RPM, but I couldn't get it to come down any lower. Now we can move on to installing the plugs. Step one is just cut the pigtail off. And then remove the loom. And you wanna strip the wire. Them. And then put the weather pack connector, weather pack seal. And then we've got my connector, which is going to go in the first part of the crimp. And then the, the two prongs. They're going to go up into this round section. And then I'm going to finish it off in the... with the teeth in this section in here. And then crimp, then I crimp the the weather pack side of it in the bottom drawers here. So just to recap, in this one here, the round one, I did the first crimp, and then I finished it off using the pointed section in here, and then I just did the weather pack terminal in the bottom one. Okay. So now you repeat it on both. The polarity of the injector doesn't matter. One is constant 12 power, which I'm assuming might be the blue in this case, and the ground is the yellow with the black. So then next you're gonna get your terminal plug here. And these pins will feed in the back of the plug. So in this case, this way up, So these pins, they only go one orientation around. So if you keep pushing it in and it doesn't seat or go all the way in, it's because you've got the wrong way. So you just need to rotate it the right direction. So you can see here, looking at here, the little tab is actually pointing at the bottom. And then to finish the plug off, you got to get this little cap that goes in the middle there and that clicks in and then that is your new injector plug now just reinstall the vacuum line the fuel hoses and then moving on to plugging in the new injectors
So when you order your injectors, you're going to need to know obviously what size they are and also the injector deadband time. So this is the voltage on the side here and you've got your PSI for your fuel pressure. So depending on what fuel pressure you're running, your injector dead time is going to be slightly different. So you will need to know what your fuel pressure is. If you're using the original standard fuel pressure regulator on the Honda, it is 45 PSI. So this first column is going to be your best bet to go with. Um, if you do have a fuel pressure regulator, you're going to choose one of the pressures you're going to operate your fuel system at. I'm just going to go 43.5. So you'll just need to key the car on, not running, and set that pressure. So I've got mine at 43.5 PSI as you saw. So next we're just going to jump in the car on the Honda and update the settings. So once you've got Honda open and your ECU is online, you want to go online, download, logging, then you're going to go to parameters, fuel injector, our stock is still going to be 240, current injector side is going to be 550, and then we're going to enter these values in here, so 8 volts. Please note that these injector dead times are dependent on the brand of injector you're using. These numbers are specifically for the 550cc Bosch injectors that I purchased. Then we're going to go update changes. To the video i hope that was informative it was my first time as well doing that stuff so i just did a bit of research online and looking around on the honda and asking a few people uh help me get through it if you have any questions i'll try my best to answer them below and i'll have links to all the products that i bought like comment subscribe and i'll see you for the next video cheers